Okay, in the last video, what we did was we added routers 1, 2, 3, and 4 into the topology, and we configured those routers to accept SSH. We also configured their interfaces, their FAST00 interfaces, and we verified that we could reach them from the network automation appliance. So uh, we did a pings, and that all worked great, but let's make sure, before we actually get into configuring and preparing Ansible, let's just make sure that SSH works. So I'm on the network automation uh, system here, and what I'm going to do is say, well, actually, before I do this, um, one of the things that you've got to be ready for whenever you use SSH is to make sure that SSH is properly configured. Some of the older style routers, uh, like these routers that we're using with Cisco IOS, they don't use the same encryption algorithm. Um, so I want to kind of show you this really quick. Um, let's do a CD2 Etsy. Oops. And let's do an LS, and we should see the SSH in here somewhere. Yes, there's the SSH directory. Okay, fine. So let's do CD to SSH. Now we're in the SSH. Let's do an LS there. Okay, so there's an SSH config file. So let's do a cat. SSH underscore config, just to show you this, because some of you may have to add this. Um, you can obviously edit this file, but one of the things you would maybe want to add if you're dealing with these older style uh, Cisco routers is to add the Diffie-Hellman um, algorithm essentially to SSH. The newer versions of SSH, which is included in the network automation appliance, don't do this by default. And notice I just add that with the plus sign, meaning that we'll just add this as an acceptable negotiation. That's it, no, no big deal there, but some of you may uh, find that that will help you if you get a refusal of SSH to work. Okay, so let's go back. We'll do a PWD to make sure we're in our root directory. Okay, perfect. Uh, so let's SSH to student. Remember, that was the username that we created at 192.168.1.101. So this would be R1 here that we're SSHing to. And great, right? It has picked up the RSA key. It's accepting this. So we'll say yes. And now we need the password, which you, you remember was CSI123. And there we are. We're now on R1. So again, we're on the network automation appliance. We have, uh, we have SSH to R1. And we can now issue commands. I can look at the interfaces, uh, show IP route. Oops, let's do IPR instead. <laughs> there we go. Uh, there's the IP routing table. Again, we don't have, really have any routing running, but we're clearly on router one, okay? So we know that uh, SSH works, so let's terminate that connection and go back to the uh, configuration now of this Ansible system. Okay, so some very important first steps to configuring Ansible is to set the environment up for Ansible to be successful in the network that you're configuring. So uh, one of the things that we can check on, first of all, is we can do a cat in the Etsy directory, find Ansible, and look for ansible.config. All right, so this is the Ansible configuration file, and it's quite large. There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, these are settings that you can go and change and so forth, and as you become more advanced, that may be something you want to do, okay? But just know that that is there. Um, so this is the Ansible configuration file again, and we just did a cat to Etsy, Ansible, and the Ansible config, okay? Um, so let's actually also look here at our hosts file. Um, so let's do a cat to Etsy hosts and let's see what we have. Okay, so 
In the Etsy directory, we have a hosts file. Now, this is kind of very similar uh, to setting you know, a host list, uh, hard configuring hosts. And you can see here it's got uh, some of the loopbacks and so forth for IPv4 and IPv6. What we'd like to do is actually configure the hosts that we have so far in the network. So this is a great place to um, add the IP addresses of our routers. That way we can just say, you know, like ping R1, um, and we don't, we don't have to worry about remembering all the IP addresses. So let's actually edit that host file. So I'm going to say nano to Etsy slash hosts. And let's take a look at this. There we go. There's the file. And let's add our router. So 192.168.1.101 is R1. 192.168.1.102 is R2. 192.168.1.103 is R3. And 192.168.1.104 is R4. We could even put in, if we wanted to here, we could say 192.168.1.3. Is and we can just call it Ubuntu and we'll call it Ubuntu 1 in case you wanted to add more. All right, excellent. So let's save that. So now, if I said ping r1, indeed, that hosts file is now helping to resolve the name r1, and you can see it's been resolved here from r1 right here, into 192.168.1.101 according to how we set up the host file. So if we cat that, we can now see the edits that we made have been added. Another thing we could say is ping Ubuntu 1. And again, now this is being resolved for us. Excellent, excellent. So that's an important step to uh, configuring the environment for Ansible to work. The next thing that what we want to do in our root directory here is actually set up what's called an Ansible, um, uh, <laughs> the, the name for it has escaped me here. Uh, there we go, Ansible inventory file. Uh, sometimes that happens. So what we want to do is create a, an inventory file for Ansible to use. And of course, we can use these names now that we have this resolution configured. So let's create a file. Again, make sure that you are in your root directory. And what we'll do is we'll say nano hosts. Okay, so this is a new file that is a new inventory file. Uh, we've called it hosts. And uh, what we'll do is we're going to create a group here. And we'll call it our, I don't know, GNS3 routers group. Actually, I forgot the three. Okay, so that's a group name. And then under this, we'll put R1, R2, R3, and R4. Notice that I have not included the Ubuntu One system because it's not a router. We could actually add that under systems later on or a different group and so forth. But for now, let's just keep this a little bit simple. Okay, so we'll save this. So now if we do an LS, we have that hosts file. And if we display what it contains. We can see we've created this group called GNS3 routers, and we have R1, R2, R3, and R4. So perfect, that is called an Ansible inventory file. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create a little local Ansible config file. You saw before when we looked at the default configuration files, very large, lots of options. So what we're going to do is create a very simple local uh, Ansible config file. So again, make sure that you're in your root directory. So pwd to do that. Yeah, I'm in the root. Okay, so we'll say nano and we'll say ansible.config. There we go. So we it's basically an empty file at this point because we're not editing the primary one. Uh, so we want to add some 
defaults. This is just to get uh, Ansible running properly. Uh, let's see, so host file equals, and we'll say dot slash hosts. We'll turn host key checking off. And uh, we'll just put a timeout of five seconds. There we go. That's really all we need to do just to point to that host file and do nothing else special. Let's save that. And so now if we do an ls, we've got both files. We've got the host file and we have that local, if you will, ansible.config file, okay? All right, so everything looks good at this point so that we can actually now go into Ansible and start using Ansible. And the way that we need to do that is we need to set up what are called playbooks. Um, the topic of playbooks was introduced in that top video on our page, uh, but we'll get into this and we'll explain a little bit about what's in a playbook and we'll set up a simple playbook to prove that all of this configuration is working. We'll do that next. Thanks.